So you ready to start this yeah, out? Yeah, let's you ready? Hell yeah. All right. Today's guest made his pro wrestling debut November 8, 2008, has worked for 40 plus promotions, has career highlights like the AIWF National Championships two times, the ASP Champion, the ASP All-Time Champion, the ASP Five Star Champion. You're gonna like, be doing that for yep. a while. I was gonna yep, say like nine billion yeah. other <laughs> championships throughout that forty plus promotions. He is credited with having the shortest reign in SWCW Champion Company history. I'm so proud of that one too. Oh, like, he's interested in that. I was gonna say he's the only documented wrestler in Oklahoma to hold five different titles in That's four cool. different promotions. Mm -hmm. At he the goes same by time. the oh, at the yeah. same damn time. He goes by the urban legend, the oh my god, the underground icon Drake Gallows. Man. Yes. How you doing? I'm doing pretty good, man. Hi. That was a mouthful. That yeah. was, dude. Was was I figured I'd shut you lot. down before you got too far. Yeah. Jesus Christ, I wrote them all down. Too. Did you really? He literally whole, wrote nine billion other things. Just <laughs> printed that shit off. Man, I should have. Yeah, he stalks me. Man, so uh, what got you started on this journey that you're at right now? Uh, currently, well, like um, our. Like my, my biggest goal right now isn't just to be an, ind an independent wrestler. I, I want to be a successful trainer. Uh, like right now, we're we're having a class behind you, and like I take a lot of pride in the fact that we have one of the most like reputable um, wrestling classes in the state. We, we there are you know a handful of places you can go to train, but I'd like to think that ours is one of the most like intricate. We're going to teach you the ins and outs and things that you're not going to learn anywhere else, and that's because I want these guys to not only like learn how to wrestle but i also want them to develop friendships you know i want them to you know make, make memories yeah. i want them to be able to like look back on their training and enjoy it as much as they do being on the show and uh you know it's not just about doing squats and push-ups and fucking running for hours it's about you know making each other better and that's what our main goal here is, is everybody here isn't here for themselves they're here for each other and like i think that that's something that I've become extremely proud of because this is a really selfish business and we're trying to convince these guys not to be so if we can take that selfishness away just a little bit and start kind of uh, I don't know if we can just make it where like we're all in in this together and it's not necessarily about you know well just being a dick that wants to get profit yeah. from it or you know it's not always about going over it's it's about putting it over. Uh, uh, something i've always like mentioned in the podcast is like uh the sense of community that y'all get i've never got the feeling that i mean they have you know they said that some people are are just just douchebags just in general what's that's in any anywhere you go they're gonna have a douchebag yeah, that's in every business exactly but area. it's like the, the sense of community that y'all have and like how you're there for each other and support each other like it's kind of way different than anything i've ever seen personally i, don't, I just find it very and that's something that, that we're working really hard to yeah. strive towards like it's it's oh i notice it for sure it's, like I, I give these lectures all the time about we're here to improve, improve each other yeah. you know and it makes me a better trainer every day when i have students that also hold me accountable and remind me that hey man like we have to be that's better true. And I want that too. Like, I don't just want to be a good wrestler. I want to be a good trainer. Mm -hmm. And I've been a trainer for like seven years. And um, I was the trainer at the MSWA Wrestling Academy. And it was entirely different than this. Because at that time, that class was mostly about to profit. Like, it was a school to make money, to pay the rent. And this school is not used for financial gain because all of the money that goes from the students to UWO stays in UWO. Like, it doesn't go in my pocket. Like, you were yeah. saying that at the show. Yeah. That's yeah. super interesting. To, yeah. the, to this day, I haven't received a dime of UWO money. Pa the, the students sign up through Patreon. Okay. And then that Patreon money, like that total, you know, eventually goes into a UWO account, and then that money is then used for things like a, a new wrestling ring that we just purchased. I mean, uh, the ring I just yeah. paid for was $6,000. Oh Man, wow. that's a pretty thing. Yeah. I didn't yeah. realize they were that much. Patreon paid wow. for that. See, that's cool. That's awesome, yeah. And uh, anytime we bring in a name, whether it be Nick Densmore or Jazz or 
Uh, we brought in Jake Crow. Crisp. Um, um, any of the guys that are coming from out of state, like the, the talent that are coming five, six, sometimes ten hours away. I've had guys come from South Carolina. I've had guys come from Florida. You know, those funds, you know, are paid through Patreon with, you know, UWO money. Yeah. I'll never take money from myself, from my family, from my kids. I'm not going to spend, you know, my grocery money on on my selfish, you know, yeah. needs yeah. and wants as a promoter. You know, I really want to bring in this famous wrestler to be yeah. on my show. Well, I got to I got to skip lunches for a month so that I can do that. I'm not going to be that guy. Yeah. I know people that are that guy, oh, yeah. and I don't want to be that person. Yeah. I, I want wrestling to pay for wrestling. That's See, cool. that's cool. Yeah, that's a cool. Yeah, and that know. keeps the love in it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Of course. Because I'm, I'm not in debt because of it. You yeah. know, and that gives me another reason to love it. Exactly. True. Yeah. True. What um, yeah. like would you say some of the like being a wrestler like some of the I'm trying to think what to say. I don't know. Some of the skills you learned along the way being a wrestler helped you be a good trainer, or is it like a whole different skill set you having to learn? Well, there are some things that you don't learn until the bell rings. You know, like I've, 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 That's an interesting I've been in matches with people that I had never met, but I learned more from them in 20 minutes than I could have in months and months and months of training. That's interesting. What do you mean, like just just the technique of it? No, like I'll, I'll explain. Uh, I wrestled a, when I was 20. I wrestled a guy by the name of Tim Storm. He's a former NWA world champion. And at the time, he was the uh, AIWF uh, world champion. Okay. And um, we had a 20-minute match, and I didn't have the greatest wind, but he told me, he was like, I'm a whipping motherfucker. And I said, what do you mean by that? And he says, I'm going to Irish whip you a lot. I said, okay, so that means I'm going to be running a lot. And I did. I ran a lot. And by the time the match was over, I was so blown, like I was exhausted. I had to legitimately like crawl through the curtain. And I said, if I don't get a bottle of water right now, I am going to fucking pass out. Oh my God. He steps over me and says, great match, kid. No. And I, I'm, I'm, I'm looking up like, thank you, sir. Yeah, you know, I was going to say, respect. Yeah. yeah, so like, and he was like in his mid 40s at the wow. time so like he's twice my age and has 20 years of wrestling experience and he stepped over me and didn't break That's a sweat cool. and i was yeah. fucking exhausted yeah. so like it, it's not necessarily an education but it was just like a it was something that i needed to experience for myself and it was like that guy who's twice my age just made me look like a chump but also made me look like a million dollars at the same time <laughs> he didn't make me look like a chunk until the match was over and i walked through the curtain <laughs> because i had to catch my breath get my win drink about a gallon of water and then go find him and tell him thank you that's cool wow so like that's interesting. Yeah, something that you would really only learn in the ring because you'd feel like that you're like, yeah, I'm, you know. I think I'm. I'm fit, you know? I think I'm in shape. Yeah, no, yeah. you're not. I was not. <laughs> yeah. That's very and cool. He's like that's a prime example at his age to yeah. be in shape. This yeah, dude's yeah. built like a brick that's house. Wild. Like he has no neck. Man. He has no neck. No neck, Johnny. I like it. Man. That's cool. Yeah. Who uh, just all muscle? Oh my god, dude. that'd be so scary. <laughs> well, that's another thing that's funny is like when you get in the ring with someone who's like really built, like you're like. Oh, I hope this dude doesn't hurt me. And like nine times out of ten, they're the biggest pussies. Oh. That's the shock. You you're, on my toe. You're like, well, it's like if you chop them, like it, there's no fat, so like it's all like hard meat. Like you're like, dude, lay that off the intense. chops, man. Calm down. Like, and I'm like, okay, sorry, I didn't realize that you needed to look pretty every day. You know, like, my bad. You need a little cushion there, man. I was gonna say, so some cushion actually helps with that. Man, better I, than the pecs. I think yeah. so. Yeah. Ooh, man. I mean, no one wants to get slapped in the titties, but no, I don't dude, that was intense on uh, on the match that I watched when there was just that three way, just like slapping each other. I was like, oh, Saturday, that hurt yeah, me. that yeah. hurt me to watch. Yeah, Mitch yeah, Onyx like, and Morrison like to chop each other yes. a lot. It was just like this, like standoff. I was just like, what? I was filming. I was like, what the fuck is going on? Like, I never seen that. Like, it was really funny. cool. Yeah, it was a good time though. That was a great match, and I, like Saturday was so much fun. It was. I really like doing free events. Like people think that I'm like ignorant for giving shows away. They're like, why the why the fuck would you do two free shows a year? And it's because like, again, we're not doing it for profit. Like, I don't get to keep the fucking money. We're doing it for the the company. We're doing it for the fans. We're doing it for everybody involved. Like, we want to give back. Like, like. Like, I'm not just going to spend the whole time trying to stroke myself, but I was like, dude, if we're not going to make any money, that means clearly we can't pay anybody. So there's a there's a joke in wrestling, you know, what'd you get paid? Well, I got a hot dog and a handshake. It basically means you didn't get paid. Yeah. 
But on shows where we don't pay each people, we go out of our way to grill. We make food. So this time I made hot dogs. And we give them a handshake. You know? So, so I, I cooked 100 hot dogs for 30 people. I, not only did I feed the wrestlers, I fed their families. You know, I told them, I said, bring your kids in, bring your wives in. Everybody eat. We've got plenty of food. Everybody gets to hang out visit with each other you know like we, we're all boys again it's a sense of community it's we just yeah we, we, we like